Acer is surely aiming at the passionate gaming souls and their new weapon in this battle is the new Predator series. In this video Laptop Media is taking a closer look at the 17 inch version of this beauty and beastie laptop, the Acer Predator 17. This is the G9-791 version. To be quite honest, I'm not a huge fan of 17 inch laptops but the Predator definitely gives me this gaming confidence I would expect from such a laptop. There is no doubt that it is rock solid and as usual when we mention the word gaming, we have to think about all those small lights, LEDs and sharp futuristic shapes that differ any laptop from the gaming one. But there is something else here. This case is actually a combination of plastic and carbon fiber, another cool feature that Acer is using in some other models in their portfolio. And that means only one thing, durable construction and weight at least acceptable for a 17 inch beast. Of course that adds some cash to the final price as well. All that together with the stylus speakers on front make the design really well fitting into the game category. But a gaming laptop should never be just a design and a couple of flashy party tricks. Its real value is in the hardware inside, the screen and the intuitive gaming functionality it gives you. Inside is expecting us impressive configuration, the Intel Core i7 of course. This is the 7600HQ, the video performance is guaranteed by the NVIDIA's GTX 980M. Its 4GB of GDDR5 memory should supply you with enough power even for the most demanding games out there. There is also a nice surprise, 4 slots and 64GB of RAM in total. To be honest, that is more than enough and sometimes goes far beyond the needs of a regular gamer, but who knows what hardware challenges the upcoming game titles will bring us. The whole configuration gave us more than fluent gaming experience and I can say that this performance is much more than cool to me. In most of our tests, the CPU of this laptop is launching it ahead of some major competitors like the Alienware M17, but the Alienware being a laptop with older CPU generation was still waiting for their answer in this category. In some graphics performance benchmarks, the Predator is very competitive but still lacks a little bit behind the Republic of Gamers. There is one thing that is absolutely sure here, the battle between those brands just begun and I hope that the future winner will be the regular gamer, getting more for the buck. Of course there will be different configurations probably that should fit more pockets and budget limitations. Check out our benchmark tests at laptopmedia.com to learn more about the performance of this laptop. Another very distinctive part of a gaming laptop should be its screen and the Predator has almost a perfect one. Our precision test showed no PWM at all brightness levels whatsoever. This is a great result and of course is supported by amazing IPS color and viewing angles quality. Ultra HD and Full HD are the options for the screen actually. Uh, we have to admit here that uh, some of the games or most of the games right now don't look that good in uh, 4K mode or in Ultra HD mode but for uh, full HD play it will be no problem at all. G-Sync is also available. Of course that would depend on the availability and market distribution but it's nice to know that such option is available in general. For more tests on the screen, see the review. Storage brings one hard drive slot and two MSATA slots. Interesting fact is that one of them is 80mm and the other one is 110 MSATA slot like the one in the MacBooks. However, you could probably combine them in RAID mode to increase performance, which we haven't tested yet. Why? There was simply no need, the computer is powerful enough for us. The backlit keyboard of course brings you some color instead of the usual boring white LEDs. Acer is going for a very gaming red here and some blue as well which looks really natural for a gaming laptop and is kind of a must to have nowadays. There is this customizable keys row that I never use but you probably do so that's nice. The laptop features a couple of extras like the four sound speakers on front divided into pairs and two subwoofers, although they are uh, right next to each other at the bottom of this uh, laptop and the effect is different from what you would expect, but the sound is fantastic anyway. There is also a removable DVD bay here. It allows you to put inside another cooling fan and support your cooling system, but the problem here is that this is not quite amazing feature. We disassembled the add-on unit and 
came to the conclusion that it's just a cheap cooling fan in plastic box. It came with our test unit and we still do not know if that's going to be a free add-on uh, to the box or a paid accessory. I would seriously think about it if that's the case because the laptop has two nice cooling fans keeping the CPU and GPU temperatures good enough to feel comfortable with it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what I get for the money buying this laptop. It's not a cheap one, of course. It is positioning somewhere between the Republic of Gamers and the Alienware gaming laptops. But there is this usual question that everyone is asking. Does it worth to choose this one before the other two? To be quite honest, I don't know. But you could probably find the answer to this question by your own looking at laptop media and our full review, of course, with the comparison test there. Thanks for watching and of course, subscribe. See you soon. Bye.